Hey everybody and welcome to Geeks Final Live. I hope you're all extremely well. Um, we are, of course, just a couple of weeks away from the new UK drone rules coming into effect. And as is the case with any new rules across any industry or any kind of hobby, there is a certain amount of uncertainty and confusion. Over the past few weeks, we've had contact from many viewers seeking clarification on sub 250 gram drones, both the new class mark drones, but also the uh, some of the confusion is around the legacy drones and of course also self-build FPV. We've been working hard with the CAA to gain some absolute confirmations on a number of key areas to help bust the myths as it were. So I, I, I seem to like using Mythbuster on the channel at the moment, uh, but the, yeah, to help bust the myths that are already starting to form around the new rules coming in 2026. They're not even here yet and we're already starting to get some sort of online myths about them, which is uh, which is crazy. Uh, that is the, the video focus today, but keep an eye out on the channel for the launch of our new 2026 Drone Rules Survival Guide, which is going to be a series of videos giving you all the facts needed to fly drones in the open category here in the UK. So if you're new to the channel, as that little symbol just showed you, hit the subscribe button to get notified of when the playlist drops. Okay, I want to make this a short fact-based show today. Uh, so I'm going to bring Graham straight in and uh, we'll, we'll get on with the myth busting, shall we? Um, how are you, sir? I'm good. And I love busting a myth. Do you? And, <laughs> and, and as we said before, I've got to do a huge, huge thank you to all those people who have joined Unmanned Support over the last few days. It's been absolutely fantastic. So thank you very much indeed. It really is appreciated. And, and so is that. Thank you very yeah, much. Yes. And yeah. we're going to talk about this a little bit later as well. But obviously, um, for those of you that have missed it, either in the member video or the public video we've just done, uh, uh, Graham is has is launching. I'm so used to saying is launching. Is, has has launched a, a new trade body for the drone hobby and industry. It's not just for the industry. And really the idea behind it, the core idea, is to help you flying your drone if you're looking to make money, but also to speak up on behalf of drone flyers of every type across the UK. So it's yep. really exciting, frankly. Um, Absolutely. Exactly. So now, uh, uh, as I was saying before, this, this is all, uh, tonight's show is all based on deep research and confirmations at senior level and policy support from the UK CAA. I'm aware that there are issues with general email replies coming back from the CA giving wrong information. Uh, we actually have a show on that topic soon, but, uh, but yeah, this isn't just replies from, you know, at, at general inquiries, etc. This is deep researched with, with the CAA, basically. So um, we're going to be talking this evening about the A1 airspace, which is the airspace that obviously sub 250 gram drones get to enjoy. Uh, that means you're flying over uninvolved people and in congested areas. It's obviously kind of like the magic source, isn't it really, Graham, of the sub 250 gram drones. And it's um, it, it's something obviously that everybody is very, very keen um, to keep hold yeah, of. Absolutely. Um, and, and why yeah. not? And why not? They're perfectly safe and we, we, we don't have yeah. the problems. So, yeah, why not, frankly? OK, so we're going to jump straight in with myth one. Um, the, the first myth here is that you cannot fly legacy non-class marked sub 250 gram drones in the A1 airspace from January 2026. And drum roll, can we guess if that's true or not? Oh, it's not true. Is yeah, that is that is that, is that is that shocking? No, no. Okay. Um, and, and I've seen this. I've actually seen this on some fairly official websites of some very large groups here in the UK where they're actually saying that you you will no longer be able to do that. Um, it, it, it literally, that just isn't the case. Um, it, it Hang just, their heads in shame. Yeah, <laughs> indeed. Well, I never like to shame people, but, <laughs> but yes. So um, the CAA clarification on this one is that operators must fly a UES that is less than 250 grams or C0 or UK0 or UK1 class. Uh, the C1 will actually get um, the, um, uh, the shown the door, as it were, at the end of uh, 2027. So that's actually the only one that, 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 you, that you'll be able to fly in January that you won't be able to fly in 2028. But by then, you should have swapped your label if you still have that drone. Uh, DJI would have, or the manufacturer, other manufacturers will hopefully provide the label to convert anyway. But it, it's, it's a really important one to, to stress because it's, this is something that I think people get confused about, and I think they get confused, you know, because it's new, obviously. Um, but it's it's one of those things where I think that because people see the C zero and the two fifty grams next to each other, and th that comes up on the next myth as well, so we won't go too in depth for that. Um, but I think people get confused about it, and they assume yeah. you're no longer going to be able to fly legacy drones, whereas 
to be fair to the CAA, and we criticise whenever whenever we can, I was about to say, whenever it is required. Um, but, um, you know, to be fair to them, they've always said that the sub-250 is going to be indefinite. Um, yeah. Uh, th th there's no so reason. It, there's no it, reason to, re re to restrict no, them heavy, it, is there? The, the safety has always been based on the low mass, hasn't it? Yes. So yes. The, the, they don't get any heavier because it's we've, we've flipped over a year. So uh, that's fine. And I, I, I've been going through the... Uh, actual statutory instrument nice uh, right up to right up to the chair i haven't got there i haven't completed it yet but i'm actually going through and updating a copy of the current uh legislation all marked up so you can see where the changes are and that will go on the unsupport uh on the uh unmanned support site for uh, for, for yeah. them so um yeah so it, it is it's, it's one of those things where um i think people because the new the new the new obviously the the class markings are going to be accepted again technically and obviously the uk ones are coming it's something that people are getting a little bit confused about basically um, so i've got a little timeline here which will help to explain this as well so it all it, in terms of things being able to fly ongoing it's all about the date of release essentially um, not even necessarily technically when you buy the drone um, so the, the pre-2026 stuff is obviously the eu c0 marked and anything that doesn't have a class mark and that's anything that was released before 2026. So if you buy a drone that was released before 2026, is sub 250 grams and doesn't have a class mark, you will still be able to fly it in the A1 airspace. Um, and obviously, um, in, in, as, as, as per the thing here, in 2026, it will be the UK label, UK zero label for any new releases um, and the no class mark. And then the EU C0, uh, UK zero and pre-2026 release legacy will continue on um, after 2028. Obviously, part of that with the continuing on after 2028 is because, of course, the EU C0 will then become legacy. So <laughs> they will then get to yeah. fall into the um, in, 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 into the legacy where it's uh, where it's required, basically. We, we, lo we love the simplified system. We do, don't we? We love a simplified system that uh, has caveats and you have to sort of, yeah, go, yeah. go backwards a little bit in, in terms of that. Um, so in, in terms of the the, the law uh, that actually um, comes around this, let me get the right tile up here. There we go. Uh, so UAS operations in the subcategory A1 shall comply with all of the following conditions. Be performed with an unmanned aircraft that has a maximum takeoff mass of less than 250 grams. Does not comply with requirements in part one or part two of the annex to the delegated relegation and was placed on the market before 1st of January 2026. So that's the, the piece of legislation that the CAA would like us to highlight in terms of clearing that particular piece of confusion up but obviously my explanation um, before that um, was the easy explanation of, as it were so that's it. And, and the revisions in the statutory instrument relating to changes after for, for 2028 don't make any changes to those uh to, to those particular uh clauses exactly yes um and and you know a, a lot of it is updating here and there and it's not significant changes hence they're able to do it via the the statutory yeah. instrument and not having to go back to uh, parliament for, for for actual changes as such um okay so we're going to move really quickly on we're moving very well this evening which i'm very happy about um to the second myth we have another myth graham uh, so if if a yes. now this is a, this is this one, we? we have this is a popular one <laughs> If a C0 class mark drone is over, weighs over 250 grams, then it cannot be used from 2026-28 in, in the UK A1 airspace. That is a myth. That is incorrect, 100%. Um, and this is obviously something which was sparked up by the Mini 5, the fact that that was over 250. And obviously at the moment, if it's over 250, technically you can't fly it. And we had the whole thing about whether or not it would be enforced and there are other videos on that on the channel we won't go to, uh, particularly down that um, rabbit hole right now <laughs> um, but it, it is obviously all about takeoff mass but it is also all about the c0 label so the class marking system yeah. is a, um, uh, a a a consumer system and the idea is, is you're supposed to have faith in that so you can trust it if you see Z, c0 you do not need to go and weigh that drone to check if it's under 250 or anything else like that. If you're going to add something like a strobe or something like that, then yes, do still weigh it. And yeah, actually, weigh it. if you weigh, if you add any additional items, it's different to the manufacturer side of things, basically, because um, it, it, all, all of the weight counts unless it's the, the manufacturer part side of it, because the manufacturers actually get, um, it's about a 4% um, uh, variance um, allowance, as it were, um, to, to be able to do that, basically. So... Yeah, it, it, it's it's something that I think is um, 
it, 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 it's, it's misunderstood, isn't it, basically? So um, again, C0, if you see that, you don't need to worry yeah. about necessarily it having, you know, what weight it is or anything else like that. Crack on. And obviously it, next it's, year it's C1 it, as well. And it, and it really is the whole point of the C class markings is that they are there for consumers and, and the UK markings is that they're there for consumers to pick up a drone and know that they can fly it in particular types of airspace. Exactly. Uh, and so, as, as Sean says, it's not down to you to try and second guess the Market Surveillance Authority, which is the CAA, whose job it is to say whether or not that uh, that that drone can be labelled. Exactly. Yes, exactly. 100%. Well said, sir. And and it is really that the, the, the manufacturers have a certain percentage of uh, variance. It's a bit like, technically, you, you, um, zero alcohol beer isn't zero alcohol and the sugar-free food isn't sugar-free but there's a very very small variance they're allowed to still call it that basically because there's all about absolutes and, and and how hard that is to actually oh, achieve and we won't we won't even get on to how many miles per gallon your car does <laughs> no indeed <laughs> exactly exactly yes um, but with this one it is there is a variance in there i think it's about four percent um uh, from memory uh, but it allows them that much weight variance in case they've used other parts or that kind of thing, basically. So, which, well, make, the which joy, makes sense. The joy, the joy of it is, Sean, is we don't need to know what the percentage is. It can be 20%. We don't we need don't to know. We don't need to know. Exactly. Label on, exactly. Ignore the weight. But again, there is, there is no allowance. There is zero allowance. There's no 4%. I don't want to start my own myth here. There is no <laughs> allowance for adding weight post-manufacture. So once you have the drone no. in your hand, a little mini five here once i add something let's say i add something a, a strobe that's three grams but this was already 253 grams this one actually isn't um then um it, it you are over you are over the weight basically um so yeah, yeah if you add things it be becomes a bit more a bit, a bit more difficult basically which is fun and games now th there is obviously a reason why we have these little things in terms of it's it's a little bit more complex and that's really because the caa are allowing uh there to be legacy drones and the C um, and, and sorry, class mark drones at the same time. So this is one of those things which I think is it's it's just going to be a little bit confusing. Um, but it means yeah. that more drones get to stay um, in the uh, um, in the sky. Yeah. Basically, we, we we are we are luckier than EASA countries, I think, in that regard. We, yes, we, we we are able to tweak the uh, tweak the rules. There is some the benefit there, isn't there? Yes, exactly. Um, and that yeah. obviously was part of the. Um, the sale, as it were, um, when the CAA said, right, we're going to make these changes. Um, and they did say that, that a, a good chunk of that, the reason for that was to make them more UK centric and to um, the fact they don't have to stick to the EU um, um, side of things, which obviously when you're talking about one country, any individual of the 20 odd other um, uh, member states, it, there will always be those rules in there that don't really suit their country or have more problems for them yeah. than others. They can actually have variances, but anyway. Um, but overall, uh, obviously, it, it's going to suit you as an individual uh, yeah, nation like yeah. ourselves now to be able to have some flexibility. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's good. Exactly. Right, the next myth. Blimey. Okay, here we go. Myth three, sub 250 gram FPV self-builds cannot be flown in the A1 from 2026. And this has really come about obviously because we're talking about um, class markings and that kind of thing. And you, you need a class marking to be flowing in here, et cetera, et cetera. Because uh, bear in mind that it is the drone and model aircraft um, uh, uh, registration system, drone code, et cetera. It's all, all, all of these wonderful things from self-build little airplanes all the way through to, um, you know, our, our, you know, DJI camera drones, they're all classed as the same thing in terms of the CAA and the UK government. Um, so yeah. that basically means um, that obviously the emphasis is there on the class markings because that is the majority of things being used. But in terms of whether or not you can use these, again, that is actually a myth. Um, it's another myth. Are, are, are we starting to see a trend? Is there here? a pattern to this? Is there a is trend there a that, that they're all myth busted? Yes. Uh, so the, the, the CAA clarification on this one is that privately built sub 250 gram drones still permitted in the A1 airspace. UAS operations in subcategory A1 shall comply with all of the following conditions be performed with an unmanned aircraft that has a maximum takeoff mass, including payload of less than 250 grams and a maximum operating speed of less than 19 meters a second. That'll be an interesting one to enforce um, because I know that's um, that's not that's not the fastest. <laughs> not FPV always. Drone. 
not always the case, is it? On, yeah, on yeah. Perhaps you can have a little switch somewhere which slows it down. Um, I'm, yeah. I couldn't possibly comment on that kind of thing. Um, but yes, but that that that's really the idea behind that. And it's you know overall in terms of these myths that we're trying to clarify here for the sub 250 gram market, which obviously is one of the biggest markets, especially in the hobby, is that you know it, the sub 250 gram side of things has been proven to be safe. All of this. Yeah giant long five-year transition period that we've had etc um it, it, it's it, you know there, there just haven't been the issues basically um as simple as that um so so you know it, it, they they they're very keen the caa to clarify that as much as possible we'll keep flying where possible basically which i think is it's it's a good thing isn't it really yeah it is, and and that that's a nice one because that one has been in from the very beginning, and and still there. It's uh, yeah, it's kind of been a bit of a pride of place, hasn't it, yeah. in terms of the um, yeah. the UK drone rules? Because even even before it, it was one of the first things that changed when we came out, and they said actually we'll keep these in, um, which I think is um which is really cool. Thank you very much. Okay, excellent. Well, I, I that, that that's everything for this evening. Thank you very much for joining us. I'll see you later in the week because we do have other shows to come, um, including a specific one on unmanned support where we're going to be talking to you a bit more in depth about what it is and um, um, what you get, but also hopefully what uh, how, what kind of impact it can have as well, which would be very exciting. So I'm going to say Sean out, and I'm going to leave the last word, as usual, to the G-Man. And I'm going to be really, really boring because I've got to be until the the initial business startup loan is paid off on unmanned support. <laughs> Join unmanned support. Thank you. Are, are, are you getting a hint there? Myths busted. Join unmanned support. Thanks, everyone. See you next time. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye.